Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we are finally looking at the Lightbringer pack for Massive Darkness. That's my understanding this is part of the stretch goals and bonusy stuff. Uh, there's also two packs of cards here. This one's got a whole bunch of them in it. And this thing here. I haven't really looked at any of this stuff. But um, this is going to be the last video for Massive Darkness. Probably the one that everybody's been waiting for. So uh, let's take a look at what is inside of this very generic cardboard box. Because usually these are filled with awesome. Alright, it's not sealed or anything, so let's get into it. Okay, right here we've got some paper. Oh, a Quest of Crystal and Lava. So the quest book. Cool. And then we've got a bunch of miniatures. Another pack of miniatures. Ooh, we've got some tiles. Ooh, we'll look at those first. Well, second, we'll look at the rule book first. Now we've got a little packet of cards here. Uh, another little packet of cards. A little baggy. A little felt baggy. And we're not going to take a very close look at that because it's stupid. Then we've got some uh, paddock of uh, what is that? The bone crusher. We'll look at that more closely too. Uh, the felt bag is a small felt bag. Not particularly interesting. It is soft though. That's cute. It's got nice embroidery. It's a uh, it's a nice little gimmick. Very very soft velvety feel. Inside feels a little more. Uh, how do I say, not as felty. All right, so let's get that out of the way. And we'll zoom in a little bit so we can look at the rule book and the tiles. Okay, so here we have the quest book. It's just a little expansion thing. Uh, it's what, um, eight pages long. It's got nice coloring. Um, yeah, nothing too special looking about it. The paper's a little thin. Uh, especially for something this, you know, only eight pages. Should have been a little thicker paper, I think. Because this is going to get torn up real easy. Especially because there's several quests in here. You're going to want to um, be real careful with this one if, if you bought the Kickstarter thingies. So this being the Kickstarter stuff, I, I would have... I expect a little lower quality, but it would have been nice to have some higher quality. All right, and let's look at the tiles. These are shrink wrapped, which is really nice. Give me one second to get cellophane off here. There we go. Alright, like the other ones, these are numbered with R and V. Probably because they want to make the other ones interchangeable. I still haven't had a chance to play this game yet. I'm filming most of these within about a 48 hour span. So I haven't had a chance to play the game. So again, I'm kind of winging it a little bit. This is mostly about seeing what's in these packages. Not so much uh, my expertise on anything. I don't claim that at all. So here's tile 10. This is really cool. It's got like this lava look. I really dig that. Nice color, nice contrast, good detailing, nice thick board. Um, so here's 10V. Here's 11R. And 11V. 12R, which I also like this one. It's a cool little dragony skull here. Uh, 12V, also really cool. Good light contrast with the darkness here. That's cool. Broken down door, dig it. 13R, and 13V. Fourteen R and fourteen B 
And finally, 15R. And 15B. Now, of course, this is just bonus stuff. You're going to need the core box to play. Uh, but this is a nice expansion onto that. And it does go with the um, a quest of crystal and lava, which is obviously a play on the um, Game of Thrones stuff. All right, let's get into our other stuff here. Here we've got our pad. This is for Bone Crusher. He's got Blind Fury, First Blood, uh, levels one through five, of course. I like the layout on these. Um, you can actually see what's what type of dice it is, that sort of thing. But the paper is garbage. This is too thin. Uh, this is another example of corner cutting. Really low end paper. This is effectively pulp paper with a cheap tack glue on here. Uh, I still say that a first year graphic designer could have designed a better pad. Um, it's got a real tiny thin piece of cardboard on the back. There's maybe 30 pages here and there's no permission to photocopy for personal use. So um, there, it's obviously a scheme to sell you more of these or something. I don't know why that they're so low end. They could have been thicker paper. It, paper does not cost that much. I understand that adds more weight. And these are fairly thick. These are not the thickest ones I've ever seen. And this is definitely not the highest quality it could have been. I expected better from Cool Mini or not. But that's just one of my complaints. Alright, let's look at the minis. Actually, let's look at the cards first. Because uh, we've been looking at the minis first and that hasn't worked out so well. So let me zoom in a little bit more if I can. So we can get a better look at the cards. Alright, let's start with our artif artifact card or cards. Looks like there's a couple of them in here. put them in these Ziploc baggies which makes it really hard to get these out without scuffing the edges. Alright so it looks like there's three of them here. We've got Assassin's Cloak, all zombies, or oh, I'm sorry, all zones in the hero's line of sight are considered shadow zones. Plus one combat action with attack plus one explosion. Priest's rel Reliquary, whatever. Artifact. The first time this the hero would be wounded for each of his turns, prevent all wounds. Hmm. Plus one action. And Bone Crusher's Pauldron. Uh, plus one melee action with attack explosion stun the enemy. Once per activation, deal five wounds to a stunned enemy in the hero's zone. Alright, that's all three of them. Pretty cool. get those out of the way real quick then we'll dig into these fight with the cellophane Well, they know how to shrink wrap stuff. I'll give them credit for that. All right. So we got quite a mix of cards. We got some three hero cards. We've got some greater roaming monsters. Oh, there's some discoloration on those. That's lovely. A lot of graders, a uh, bunch of whole stack of lessers. All right. So we'll start with the uh, lesser monsters and work our way up. First we have a werewolf, lesser roaming monster, attack two, uh, it, sorry, attack plus two weapons if werewolf has more wounds than half of its health. Uh, sword of uh, two red die, shield of one blue, one green. Were tiger, lesser roaming monster, attack or defense, blank results are re-rolled one additional time. Melee of two red dice, defense of one blue, one green. The Werebear. 
Stuns a hero standing in the same zone. Players choose each time it activates. Uh, attack of one yellow, one red. Defense of two blue. Overseer, lesser roaming monster. During the enemy's phase, instead of activating, Overseer activates the target hero as if it were a roaming monster. Ignore the class sheet for this activation. Uh, melee of three yellow, range of three yellow, and defense of two blue, one green. Next we have an Oni. Uh, slippery, when leaving a zone, inflict one wound to each hero there. Melee of two red. Defense of two blue, one green. Then we have an Ogre Rock Breaker. Attack Explosion. Defender gets minus one. I think that's a blue shield. Um, attack of uh, melee three red. Defense of three blue. Again, black background with a blue or green square. I, I can't see that. It actually shows up better on camera than it does when you're looking at it. And that's because the camera has a uh, better auto adjust, I think, than my middle-aged eyes. Ogre Brute. Attack explosion. Stun the hero. Uh, we got an attack of two red. Defense of two green. Nightmare Thing. Defense, attacking heroes can't use their shadow mode skills. Melee of three yellow, defense of two blue, one green. Low troll. Roll two. I, I don't know what color die that is. If he would be killed, um, there's a sword on it. So, yep, one of them. It looks like it's green. I can't tell. I think it's supposed to be yellow. Uh, this explosion still alive with one health. All right, uh, melee of two red, defense of one blue, one green. If you know what color that is, please uh, let your friends know. Uh, maybe it'll say in the rules somewhere. Living construct spawns with an additional treasure card. Cards with the same attack mode always combine. That's cool. Uh, melee, one yellow. Uh, ranged, one yellow. And defense, one blue. Iron Golem. No attack may afflict more than three wounds to the Iron Golem. That's pretty cool. Uh, not if you're attacking him, though. Uh, melee of two yellow, one red. Defense of two green. Hell's Bane. Attack plus one sword per hero in the shadow in the shadow zone. Oh, that's interesting. Um, melee of two uh, yellow and magic of two yellow. Defense of two blue, one green. Graz and Prug. When they attack, if there's more than one hero in the zone, roll one. Uh, looks like a red die. Explosion must target a different hero in this zone instead. Alright, uh, sword of two red and shield of three blue. I'm pretty sure that's a red die because it looks like two swords. Uh, Formorian. Attack plus one sword per hero in the same zone. Uh, sword of uh, one yellow, one red. Defense of two blue, one green. Flesh Golem. It heals half its wounds rounded down when it activates during the enemy's phase. Melee of three yellow, defense of one blue, one green. Chun Ha. Defense explosion plus one shield and inflict one wound to the attacker. Defense diamond plus two shields and inflict one wound to the attacker. Melee of two red, defense of one blue, one green. Pretty tough. Cliffbreaker Cyclops attacks plus three swords if he has five or less health. Uh, melee of two yellow, one red. Range of two red, two yellow, one red. And defense of one blue, one green. Chromantis. Uh, it's a unicorn. 
Uh, attack plus one sword per male hero in line of sight. Defense plus one shield per female hero in line of sight. Uh, melee of two red. Magic of two red. Uh, shield of one blue, one green. Alright, that's pretty tough. Alright, now to the greater roaming monster pack. Stack, I should say. I'm getting tired. It's been a long day. The werewolf attack plus three swords if werewolf has more wounds than half of its health. Uh, plus three swords, yeah. Uh, melee of one yellow, three red. Defense of three blue, one green. Wired Tiger, attack or defense. Blank results are rerolled one additional time. Melee of one yellow, three red. Defense of three blue, one green. Wear Bear, stuns a hero standing in the same zone. Players choose each time it activates. Melee of two yellow, two red. Uh, defense of one blue, two green. Overseer, during the enemy's phase, instead of activating, Overseer activates the target hero as if it were a roaming monster. Ignore the class sheet for this activation. Melee of three yellow, one red. Range of three yellow, one red. Defense of one blue, three green. Oni, slippery. When leaving a zone, inflict one wound to each hero there. That's nasty. Uh, melee of one yellow, three red. Defense of one blue, three green. Ogre Rockbreaker. Attack, double explosion. Defender gets negative one uh, die. I think that's... It's got one shield on it, so I think it's blue. And minus one, uh, the other die, from what I can tell. Green. I, I can't tell. It blends in too good. Um, melee of three yellow, one red. Defense of two blue, two green. These colors really bleed in here. I couldn't even tell there was a, a die there at first. And I've had that problem with several cards so far. And I apologize for that, but I just can't, I can't see these real well. I can't tell what color that is, and I couldn't even see this one. Ogre Brute. Attack, uh, explosion, stuns the hero. Melee of one yellow, three red. Uh, defense of three blue, one green. Nightmare Thing. Attacking heroes can't use their shadow mode skills. Uh, attack three yellow, one red. Defense, two blue, two green. Low troll, rolls, roll three. Sword, if he would be killed. Uh, I, I, I think those are yellow, die. Explosion, still alive with one health. Melee of two yellow, two red. Defense, three blue, one green. You can tell the... I can't tell what color that is, but you can tell the colors down here are using either different ink or um, when they assembled the cards, the designer didn't take into consideration these would be on a black background. Because down here, the numbers are bright and colorful. Up here, they are not. So this was done when they did this text box. It didn't come out well, and you can't see what color dye that is. Oh, that is so frustrating. I feel bad for anybody that's colorblind. You won't see that box. Most likely. Uh, Alright, Living Construct. Spawn with an additional treasure card. Cards are always the same attack mode, always combine. Cards with this same attack mode, always combine. Alright, we've got one red melee, one red ranged, and defensive one green. Iron Golem. No attack may inflict more than three wounds to the Iron Golem. Uh, melee of one yellow, three red. Defense of one blue, three green. Hell's Bane. Attack plus one um, sword per hero in a shadow zone. Melee of two yellow, one red. Magic, two yellow, one red. Defense, three blue, one green. Graz and Prug. When they attack, if there's more than one hero in the zone, roll one red die. Explosion must target a different hero in this zone instead. Alright, melee of two yellow, two red. Defense of three blue, one green. 
Grimorian attack plus two swords per hero in the same zone. Um, melee of one yellow, two red. Defense of two blue, two green. Flesh Golem. It heals half its wounds, rounded down when it activates during the enemy's phase. Melee of two yellow, two red. Defense of one blue, two green. Uh, Soon Ha, Chun Ha, whatever it is. Defense explosion plus one shield and inflict one wound to the attacker. Defense one uh, defense diamond plus two shields and inflict one wound to the attacker. Melee of one yellow, three red. Defense of three green. Cliffbreaker Cyclops. Attack plus three swords. If he has five or less health, melee one yellow, two red, ranged one yellow, two red, defense of two blue, one green. And lastly, Chromantis, the unicorn, attack plus one sword per male hero in line of sight, defense plus one shield per female hero in line of sight, melee of three red, magic three red, defense two blue, two green. All right, that rounds out these cards. Let's look at the hero cards. And this is what the back of the cards look like. So let's see what we got here. Lil Ned. Shadow mode skill. Attack explosion plus two swords. Defense minus one shield. Special skills, huge. Melee actions have range 0 to 1. Lil Ned blocks enemy lines of sight. Recommended class Bone Crusher. Then we've got Miriam. Shadow Mode skill. Attacker defense. Steal one explosion or diamond from the defender or attacker. Special skill. Healer. Once per activation, roll one blue die and heal wounds equal to the number of shields from herself or an ally in line of sight. Recommended class. Battle Wizard. Alright, she's pretty good. Uh, Sicarius. Shadow mode skill. Attack. Blank results get plus one sword. Ooh. Uh, special skill. Loner. If he has no allies in line of sight, skill, whatever his name is, gets attack plus two swords. Recommended class, Blood Moon Assassin. Alright, so these guys sound pretty good. Alright, let's get them out of the way. And we'll take a look at these miniatures. Alright, so we got some big guys here. Let me try and adjust the camera a little bit. and see if we can get a good look at these. Alright, so here's our first stack of miniatures. And this guy is actually really big and really cool looking. Um, that is actually a really nice sculpt. And it seems to be a little better than their average ones. Um, these have a slightly different feel from the regular minis. And these are obviously a slightly higher quality of sculpt, a little more detailing than the uh, regular cannon fodder guys. Then we've got um, this thing. Don't know what he is, but he's really cool looking. Scary. Uh, downside is you can see the seams where he's glued together really well. Uh, this one might be hard to hide. That one will be fairly easy to paint over, I think. Uh, it's obviously several pieces put together, but it's a nice sculpt. Fairly heavy. I'd be a little worried about this tendril here, whatever that is. Um, it's part of the main body here, so it looks like that might break off fairly easy. But overall, a really nice look at sculpt. Then we've got this guy. Again, another nice looking sculpt, lots of detailing. These are probably some of the best ones I've seen from this game line so far. Some of the others were really disappointing. Or at least, you know, they weren't disappointing in general. They were disappointing for this company. Alright, then we got the big guy. Oh, he looks really cool. Get a load of this guy. 
This guy's huge. Nice big rock there to bash people in the head with. That's going to leave a mark. Um, big old meat cleaver axe thingy. Yeah, real nice miniature. Real big, too. Uh, your average guy's going to come up to about his knee. Maybe a little higher. But uh, it's, it's a little back heavy because of this rock, so be aware of that. But it's a nice looking sculpt. Real cool mini, uh, especially considering this was like a Kickstarter thing. So uh, that if that had been in the core box, I'd have been a little happier with that. All right, then we got this dude. Big old hammer thing going on. Nice looking sculpt. Good detailing. Good quality figure. Here we've got a troll. <clears throat> and the last one in this half is uh, the werebear, I think is what this one is. That's a really cool one. The fur looks really good. Really detailed fur. That had to take hours to get all that. But I like that one a lot. That's, that'll look really cool painted. It looks cool without the paint. Alright, so that's the first half of the pack. We'll get these put away and we'll get to the other half. As I knock lots of things around on the table. There's a lot, lot more minis in this pack. There's two trays. So let's see what we've got here. We've got some more of the regular guys from the starter box. So we've got some more of these guys, which I still say they're not as good as they could be. Although these do feel slightly better, I don't know. Maybe it's just my imagination. But yeah, the only... Uh, well, it looks like, yeah, these are all starter guys from the box. I don't see anybody that's exceptionally different. Uh, we've got, looks like, four archers, uh, four of the dwarves with hammers, um, four of the goblin-looking guys, one of the shaman-looking dudes, uh, one of this guy, one of the bosses, I think. And then one of him, one of that dude, the sword. One of him, one of him, two of this guy, two of these guys, and two of the dwarves with axes. Alright, so these are just guys that were in the core box. You get some extras. Let's get them out of the way because they're not as interesting. We've seen those before. All right, our last tray of guys here. We'll start with uh, this dude, who's really big and has a really cool spike club. Nice looking sculpt. Uh, not a lot of detailing uh, because he's shirtless. I guess they didn't really need any. But the spike club looks cool. Then we've got a. Um, this dude with a sword sticking in him. That actually looks a little cheap, in my opinion. That'll probably break off fairly easily. Uh, it could have been designed a little better. I think if the dude was a little bigger, they could have made the sword a little thicker. It just looks almost like a dagger, because he's either big enough or that is small enough. And he's got this chain thing with a big hook on it. It's a pretty cool looking uh, idea. And the chain looks really cool. He looks pretty good. Lots of detailing on the muscles in the back. And his uh, outfit. But the sword thing looks a little weak. Alright, next we've got this guy. Pretty cool looking mini. Uh, detailing could use a little bit more, I think. But I'm being nitpicky at this point. Because it is pretty nice. So I like this one. This looks really cool. He looks really tough. 
And he's got that cool claw thing. Then we've got this dude with a giant bedroll and two heads. I forgot his name already. Uh, but yeah, it looks really cool. Oh, that's not bedroll. That's like a battering ram. Yeah, he looks pretty scary. Yeah, that's a cool sculpt. Uh, I like that one a lot. Big fat dude with two heads and a giant battering ram. All right, then we've got uh, this scary-looking night guy with a cool-looking mace. That's a nice sculpt. I dig that. Very detailed on the armor. Very cool-looking miniature. Here we've got the uh, chin guy. Chun Ha or something like that. Uh, the chin thing's a little weird. I don't really get that. I'm sure there's a reference there, but it just makes him look kind of silly. I think it's supposed to be like an Egyptian thing because he's got a Kopesh, but I don't know. if it was painted, it'd probably look better. But all right, then we got this guy, which is I think the Iron Golem. Really cool looking mace. Dig it. It's kind of loose though. That could break off. It's a little curved, uh, so the plastic isn't as thick as it could have been to keep it straight. It looks like he's just resting it on his head. But it, it's a cool sculpt otherwise. I just think the plastic was a little inferior for what they were trying to do. They could have shortened the mace a little bit so it didn't get this unnatural curve in here. It's very slight, but it's enough to make it look like he's resting that on his head because it's just the plastic warping. But, pretty nice looking piece, overall. And we got this guy, which from a distance looks like a predator. Uh, but he's not. Detailing's pretty good, but it's kind of a weak sculpt in my opinion. I don't know what this thing is. Is that a tail? Yes, it's a tail. It looks like a piece of rope hanging out of his butt. So, I don't want to know what that is, but it's obviously some kind of tail thing. It doesn't look real good and this is bent I don't think it's supposed to be I think that's supposed to be like a spear but it's got kind of a curve to it and I don't think that's supposed to be there but that's the way it was packaged so and then we've got a the, like a werewolf it looks a lot like the werewolf from zombie side uh, not identical, but cl pretty close. So it's enough that I don't know. I don't. It's not unique looking. Although he's got his tongue sticking out, which is probably gonna break off because that's kind of cheap looking. But it's a cool pose, and artistically, it's pretty cool looking. But it's more of a display piece sort of thing. And he's got a little skull on his hip here, like he's saving that a little trophy, a little stereo killer trophy for Mr. Werewolf. Then we've got um, the Were Tiger. He looks really cool. That would look really good painted up because he's pretty muscular and he's a tiger, so you could put some Tony the Tiger stripes on him. Maybe give him a little box of Frosted Flakes to work with. But that's a pretty cool looking miniature. Uh, these little horns here on his shoulder pad, those are going to break. I could almost guarantee that. All right, then we've got our... Uh, Sinister Unicorn with a curved horn. Thank you. Cool mini or not. Good job. Horn's not even straight because of the way it's put in the box. Um, or it's just cheap molding. Uh, that'd be difficult to straighten out without breaking that off, I think. But the horse body itself looks really good. Uh, it's a little simplistic design. It looks almost like a um, toy that you'd give kids, but... It's actually uh, pretty well done, it's solid at least. Overall, I can't complain about this one, because uh, really, I mean, it's supposed to be colorful, so it needs to be painted for that. But the tail looks good, the body looks good, the head looks really good. There is a visible seam on the head, which I don't particularly care for, but that's unavoidable. I don't know why this wasn't one piece, especially because they already screwed up the horn. 
and some of the little bits of hair coming off of here I don't know if you can see that uh, there's little tufts of hair coming up like in a spike that could break off if you're not careful so that would worry me a little bit otherwise it's a cool design I just think they should use a slightly higher grade of plastic for the horn and these this little bits of hair here probably could have been put into little tufts so there wasn't as much chance of breakage but that horn really annoys me because that's these aren't even mine and I'm upset but that curved horn that's that's lazy alright lastly we've got our heroes here here's our magic lady with the healing spell nice sculpt really good uh, good design good detailing she looks good then we've got uh, the sword guy I forgot he's the one I can't pronounce it anyway so begins with an S he looks really cool the back of him is really detailed like this helmet is really detailed the armor looks really cool uh, pretty nice looking model look really cool painted he's got like a I don't know is that a hun outfit whatever it is he looks really neat and then we've got this big dude the cape looks really cool fanned out um, real nice sculpt real tough looking guy hardcore giant hammer so yeah really cool looking all right let me get these put away because that's all of them for the second part of the minis pack Ooh, that's a weird noise all right now that is what was in the late bringer box but we're not done yet So that's the Lightbringer uh, pack, but there were additional cards thrown in. These three in here in this thing. So let's look at those now. We'll start with the ones in the Ziploc bag. I think these were an add-on you had to buy separately. Like I said, these aren't mine, so I don't really know. I'm just doing these all together because they were part of the stretch goals thing is my understanding so what we've got here is um, some more monster cards and then we've got the massive darkness character cards for characters from zombie side and we've got zombie side cards for the massive darkness characters so let's open these up let's start with the monsters and make you wait for the heroes and let's see if I get the cellophane off. This is good cellophane, nice and snug, but it makes it difficult to get out the cards. All right, so we've got two greater roaming, three lesser, some guard cards, guard five, four, threes, twos, and ones. So we'll start with the greater monsters because they were on top. And we have an Ablomination. Ablomination, whatever. Uh, can resolve melee actions at range 0 to 1. All wounds inflicted to the target hero are also inflicted to all other heroes at range 0 to 1. Melee of 3 yellow, 1 red. Defense of 1 blue, 3 green. And then we have an Abominatar. Melee plus one wound. Ignores walls to define its route and perform move actions. A melee of one yellow, two red. Defense of one blue, two green. Alright, so they're still nasty. Let's look at the lesser versions of them. We have the Abominatrol. Perform two activations during the enemy's phase. Attack of two red melee. Defense of two green. A blob in a nation, whatever. I'm never going to get that word right. Can resolve melee actions at range 0 to 1. All wounds inflicted to the target hero are also inflicted to all other heroes at range 0 to 1. 
Melee of three yellow, defense of two green. And the Abominatar, melee plus one wound, ignores walls to define its route, perform melee or move actions. Uh, move actions, sorry. Uh, attacks of melee, two yellow, one red, defense of one blue, one green. That's cool. Let's get those out of the way. All right, we'll look at the fives first. Actually, we'll start at the bottom. Look at one. So that's the easiest way to do it. We have zombie walkers, level one, mob, enemy phase, add one zombie walker, ignore this power if you run out of zombie walkers. Uh, we have a uh, melee of two yellow, defense of one blue. And then we have another zombie walkers, exactly the same. So level one's two zombie walker cards. Level two. We've got Zombie Runners. At the end of their activation, they move one zone toward the same target. Melee of two yellow, defense of two blue. Zombie Wolves. Mob. At the end of their activation, they perform an additional attack against a hero in their zone. Players choose. Uh, melee of one yellow, one red, defense of two blue. Zombie walkers. Enemies phase. Add one zombie walker. Ignore this power if you run out of zombie walkers. Melee of two yellow. Defense of two blue. And zombie dead eye walkers. Ranged plus one sword. If they have it, move this activation. Uh, melee of two yellow. Range of one yellow, one red. And defense of one blue. Cool. Level threes. Zombie runners. At the end of their activation, they move one zone toward the same target. Melee of two red, defense of three blue. Zombie wolves. At the end of their activation, they perform an additional attack against a hero in their zone. Players choose. Uh, melee two yellow, one red, defense of three blue. Zombie walkers. Enemy phase. Add one zombie walker. Ignore this power if you've run out of zombie walkers. Uh, melee three yellow. Defense of two blue, one green. And lastly, the zombie, zombie dead eye walkers. Range plus two swords if they haven't moved this action activation. Ah, I cannot talk today. Uh, melee of one yellow, one red. Range of two red. Defense of three blue. That's level fours. Or level threes. Sorry, my bad. Level three. Let's look at level four. Zombie runners. At the end of their activation, they move one zone toward the same target. Melee of one yellow, two red. Defense of two blue, one green. Zombie wolves. At the end of their activation, they perform an additional attack against a hero in their zone. Melee of three yellow, one red. Defense of two blue, one green. Zombie walkers. Enemies phase, add one zombie walker. Ignore this power if you've run out of zombie walkers. Melee of three yellow, defense of one blue, two green. And lastly, the dead eye walkers again. Range two swords if they haven't moved this action activation. Melee of two yellow, one red. Ranged of one yellow, two red. Defense of two blue, one green. That's level four. Level five. Zombie runners. At the end of their activation, they move one zone toward the same target. Melee of three red. Defense of three blue, one green. Zombie wolves. At the end of their activation, they perform an additional attack against a hero in their zone. Players choose. Melee of two yellow, two red. Defense of three blue, one green. Zombie walkers. Add one zombie walker. Ignore this power if you've run out of zombie walkers. Uh, they have four health this time. Uh, melee of three yellow, one red. Defense of three green. Zombie dead eye walkers. Uh, ranged of three swords if they... Plus three swords if they haven't moved this activation. Melee of one yellow, two red. Range of 
two yellow, two red. Defense of three blue, one green. And lastly, Zombie Agent. At the end of the enemy's phase, spawn a guard on the level token of this tile. Melee of one yellow, three red. Defense of two blue, two green. Those are the Necromancer figures from Zombie Side, if you didn't recognize it. They just call it an agent in this one. Alright. That is all the cards in that pack. So let's get those out of the way. And we'll get to the Massive Darkness character cards. We've got Tucker. Woo, Tucker. Shadow mode skill. If he kills at least two minions in one attack, kill one more in the same zone. Special skill. Opportunist. Defense. Explosion. Deal one wound to the attacker. Recommended class warrior priest. Sylvia. Shadow mode skill. Dual wielding attacks. Dual wielding attack. Plus two swords. Special skill, Nimble, defense, plus two shields, but if Sylvia takes any wounds, she takes plus one wound. Recommended class, Pit Fighter Berserker. Julian. That guy. Shadow mode skill, melee, double explosion, steal the treasure from the targeted mob. Special skill, Thief, at the start of a quest, draw three treasure cards of your level and choose one to keep. Recommended class, Blood Moon Night Runner. Then we've got Glinda. Shadow Mode skill, defense, deal one wound to the attacker. Special skill, duck and kill. Defense diamond, kill one minion in the attacking mob. Re recommended class, Paladin of Fury. Then we've got Arnon Arnond, whatever. Shadow mode skill, plus one sword for each two shield the defender rolls. Special skill, smuggler, plus one reorganized trade action. Recommended class, Blood Moon Night Runner. Then we have Theo. Shadow mode skill, attacks, uh, attack, cancel all defense, explosion, and diamonds. Special skill, obstinate, Theo can't be stunned. Recommended class, Nightshade Ranger. Then we've got Morrigan. Shadow mode skill, blood tribute one, attack, plus one reroll attack. Special skill, alchemist, discard a healing potion to roll two swords and deal wounds, two, two red die, sorry, and deal wounds equal to the number of swords to one enemy. Wait, let me start over. Discard a healing potion to roll two red die and deal wounds equal to the number of swords to one enemy in line of sight at range 0 to 2. Wow. Recommended class, Sorcerer. Then we have Carl! Shadow mode skill, magic attack, explosion, plus two explosions. Special skill, resourceful. His attack gets plus one red die if it is, if it would have more than three yellow die. Okay, recommended class, Battle Wizard. Next we have Ariane. Shadow Mode skill, attack, explosion, plus one. I think that's a yellow die. Uh, special skill, point blank. May use ranged weapons at range zero. Recommended class, Blood Moon Night Runner. Again, can't tell what that is. Silas. Shadow mode skill, attack, blank results get plus one sword. Uh, special skill, stride, once per activation, Silas may move one zone for free with slippery. Recommended class, Nightshade Ranger. Then we've got Nelly. Shadow mode skill, two handed weapon, attack plus one, maybe yellow die. Uh, special skill, hit and run, if her attack 
deals any wounds, Nelly may immediately move one zone with Slippery. Recommended class, Shadow Barbarian. She sounds pretty cool. Samson. Shadow Mode skill. Attack double explosion. Instantly kill one targeted minion. That's nice. Special skill. Stout defense plus one shield. Recommended class. Bone Crusher. Clovis. Dual wielding. Uh, this is Shadow Mode skill. Dual wielding attack plus one wound. Special skill. Resilient defense. May reroll blank results one additional time. Recommended class, Noble Warrior. Baldric. Shadow Mode skill, Magic plus one explosion. Special skill, Magic Arsenal. Equipped two-handed magic weapons are considered one-handed. Recommended class, Battle Wizard. And finally, Anne. Attack explosion plus one wound. Special skill, Alms. At the start of Anne's activation, she may heal one ally in line of sight by one. Recommended class, Warrior Priest. Alright. Those are the zombie side characters for Massive Darkness. And let's take a look at the zombie side version of the Massive Darkness characters. So you get quite a little stack here. So we'll start with this one. This is Zoe. This slot may hold a hammer instead. Okay. Uh, she gets taunt. Plus one action. Or And then in the orange we've got plus one free melee action or frenzy combat. Red is plus one free combat action barbarian ironhide. Next we've got Whisper. Who I thought was actually a zombie side character. Uh, but uh, it's not. It just looks like one. Uh, this slot may hold a crossbow instead. Plus one damage melee at blue. Yellow is plus one action. Orange is plus one free melee action or hit and run. And red is plus one free combat action or plus one free move action or reaper combat. Uh, Victoria. Oh, she can hold a crossbow too. Uh, Victoria can hold a healing scroll. Since there's only one in the deck. I don't know what good that's going to do you. Uh, blue plus one die reroll. Uh, I'm sorry. Plus one dice roll melee. Uh, yellow plus one action. Orange is plus one die roll magic or iron hide. Red is plus one damage combat or plus one free combat action or bloodlust melee. Then we've got Valerie. And uh, she can hold a dagger instead of armor. Uh, blue, tough. Yellow, plus one action. Orange is bloodlust melee or reaper combat. Uh, red is plus one damage combat. Plus one free combat action. Or plus one die roll combat. Then we've got Sylvan. He can hold a longbow instead of armor. Blue, pl plus one ranged. Uh, sorry, plus one damage ranged. That's pretty good. Uh, blue, uh, uh, man, I cannot talk. Yellow is plus one action. Orange is plus one free action or ambidextrous. Red is plus one die combat or one plus one free combat action or hit and run. And then we've got silence. Dun, dun, dun. We're getting real original with the names here. Uh, can hold a dagger instead. Blue, plus one free move action. Yellow, plus one action. Orange, plus one free melee action. Or lucky. Uh, red is plus one die roll melee. Or bloodlust melee. Or slippery. Then we've got Siegfried. Can hold a hammer instead. Uh, blue is frenzy combat. Yellow is plus one action. Orange is plus one die roll combat. Or bloodlust melee. Red is plus one damage melee or plus one free combat action or taunt. Then we've got Sicarius. 
He can hold the dagger. I think he's supposed to be a vision knockoff. I don't know. Uh, blue, Swordmaster. Yellow, plus one action. Orange, plus one free move action. Or melee, plus one die. Red is plus one free combat action. Or plus one die roll melee. Or melee, plus one die. Then we've got Sybil. I uh, can hold a dagger instead of armor. Blue, plus one zone per move. Yellow, plus one action. Orange is plus one free ranged action or plus one die roll ranged. Red is uh, plus one die roll melee or plus one free combat action or hit and run. Then we've got Sarah. Can hold a dagger. Uh, lifesaver on blue. Yellow is plus one action. Orange is plus one free melee action or hit and run. Red is plus one free combat action. Plus one to die roll melee or dreadnought walkers. Next up we have Owen. He can hold a shield. Uh, blue iron hide. Yellow plus one action. Orange plus one free melee action or taunt. Red plus one free combat action or regeneration or zombie link. And then we've got Ostra. Ostra can hold a shield instead of armor. Blue Reaper melee. Uh, yellow is plus one action. Orange is bloodlust melee or iron hide. Red is plus one free combat action or plus one die roll melee or shove. Then we've got Miriam. She can hold the speed scroll instead of armor. Blue point blank. Yellow plus one action. Orange hit and run or spellcaster. Red is plus one free combat action or plus one max range or iron hide. Then we've got Moira. Can hold a torch instead of armor. Uh, blue plus one die roll magic. Yellow plus one action. Orange plus one free magic action or hit and run. Red plus one damage magic or roll six plus one die roll magic. Plus one die magic, sorry. Uh, or zombie link. Then we've got Mila, who needs to buy some clothes. She can hold a short bow. Uh, blue is shove. Yellow is plus one action. Orange is plus one die roll melee or bloodlust. Red is plus one damage melee or plus one free combat action or jump. Then we've got Malus. Uh, who can hold a healing scroll instead of armor. Uh, blue, bloodlust magic. Yellow, plus one action. Orange, plus one die combat or spellbook. Red, plus one free combat action or lucky or spellcaster. Then we got Luned. Can hold a hammer instead of armor. Blue, reaper, melee. Yellow, plus one action. Orange, plus one damage melee. Or shove. Red plus one free melee action or plus one die roll melee or frenzy melee. Then we've got Elias. Can hold a torch instead of armor. Blue plus one free magic action. Yellow plus one action. Orange magic plus one die or spell book. Red plus one die combat or plus one dice roll combat or spellcaster. We got Bjorn. Can hold a short bow instead of armor. Blue, bloodlust melee. Yellow, plus one action. Orange, plus one damage melee. Or plus one free melee action. Red, plus one free combat action. Or plus one die roll melee or shove. Then we've got Ezreal. And he can hold a dagger instead. Of armor. Uh, blue, born leader. Yellow, plus one action. Orange, plus one free move action. Or plus one die roll melee. Uh, red, plus one damage melee. Or plus one free combat action. Or iron hide. And lastly, we've got Ajax. This slot can hold a dragon bile instead of armor. Blue, plus one damage magic. 
Yellow plus one action. Orange plus one die magic or slippery. Red fr plus one free combat action or plus one die roll magic or regeneration. All right, these guys actually look pretty useful in the zombie side. Uh, honestly, I think the zombie side stuff is the... Uh, this pack makes a lot of this stuff a lot more worthwhile because you can use your zombie side stuff and you can use this. I would definitely pick this up if you're going to pick up Massive Darkness and you, or uh, Zombie Side Black Plague. If you already have one of them and you want to get the other, I would definitely track this down. This is a great add-on. Oh yeah, and then um, he also, uh, when Wyatt got the Kickstarter, he also got these dice, which are just another set of dice, but marble looking. I would always recommend getting an extra set of dice so you guys can share when you're playing. Um, I think it's a great idea. And these look pretty cool with the marble look to them. I like these a lot. They're pretty cool looking dice. So it's always good to have an extra set of dice because if you lose one, really throws off the game. So let's look at our last pack of cards. Uh, these are, are labeled replacement card pack. This, oh, okay, this pack contains replacement cards for misprinted cards in the following products. MD001, Massive Darkness, seven cards. Holy crap. MD003, Troglodytes, five cards. MD004, Elementals, two cards. MD006, Warrior Priests vs. the Spear Maiden Cyclops, one card. MD008, Sorcerers vs. Lord Tusk, one card. MDK501, Lightbringer Pack, six cards. They're even replacing stuff that was in the Kickstarter stuff. MDKSO3, Black Plague Crossover Kit, which we just looked at, two cards. Alright, so apparently they're replacing some cards. Are they going to do that with the stuff they already sent out to the distributors? Or are you going to have to order these special? Because a lot of people are going to be really upset by this. I know I was upset with a lot of the cards. The way that you couldn't read them. Maybe this fixes them. Let's find out. Uh, this should have been handled by quality control when they first uh, got this stuff ready and this is a lot of stuff to have mistakes on a lot so um, yeah it says please remove the affected cards from your massive darkness product and replace them with the corresponding cards included in this pack you may have extra cards left over for other massive darkness products which may be discarded at your discretion. Why would you throw them away if you might buy that package? This just discourages me from investing more in this game. All right, so the first one is uh, Ariane. Uh, it looks like they just fixed the coloring that I was complaining about this entire time. So maybe I should open these first. There's Nelly, that is yellow. Um, here's Ajax. Yeah, they've they fixed the coloration. Moira. All right, Greater Roaming Monster. Yep, that's what they did. They fixed the coloring that I was complaining about the entire time. And honestly, that would have kept me from investing in this game. Uh, that's all it would have taken. If they don't correct this in the main distribution sets, I would not buy this. And there's going to be a lot of angry people because I don't think everybody's going to be able to find these packs. And if you have to send the cards in to get the replacement ones, A, that's insulting because it says you're, it, it's worse than um, paying like Call of Duty when you have to get the download packs that probably should have been in the game anyway. So yeah, I'm, uh, this is this is super insulting to players that they didn't, they didn't catch such an obvious mistake early on. And if they, like I said, if these hit the shelves and these corrected cards aren't in there, they're going to have a lot of very angry customers because it does affect the quality of the play. I mean, look at that. That is significantly different than what we saw in the game. So, yeah, that, that's all they did was these just correct those other cards um, so that you can actually read them. And... Honestly, these feel a little different 
yeah these aren't as gl these aren't glossy on the on one side which is probably what did it was the cheap gloss they were using or they just misprinted this but these are not as good quality of cards cuz th like this one and this one aren't even glossed on this side this one has real minor gloss so these are lower quality cards to correct the higher quality goof ups they did um yeah, um, I'm actually really, really annoyed by that. I I can't believe they'd give you a lower quality card as a replacement because these are just a roll at low end matte finish. I've seen better trading cards than these. Uh, these do feel a little thicker than the other ones though. I'll give them credit for that. And they did fix the error, but how many people are going to end up with these packs? Because this was just thrown in in the big box these were shipped in. These weren't put in the stretch goal box. These weren't put in any kind of protection. It'd be easy to accidentally throw them away or they'd get damaged. If the box got opened, they could have fallen out. There's a lot of things that could have gone wrong. And uh, yes, they did fix their mistake to some degree, but it's insulting that it had to come to that. And there's just another duplicate of the replacement card pack. I am furious about these cards. Um, yeah, that's not even my money, and I'm mad, because, uh, one of my best friends spent money on this game, and he spent a lot of money, too, and buying all the packs that he could, and all this other stuff, and then they have to go and send you replacement cards, just so you can read them, and they're not even, like, there's not even a good finish on them, uh, the, yeah, I'm really insulted by that. But now you have to go through and pull these out. And you've already heard me complain about those cards, how I couldn't read them. Well, it looks like they corrected most of them. This probably is most of them. I don't think it's all of them, but I think it's most of them. It's enough that they're making an effort. But if they don't correct that, that's going to cost them sales. Because if I bought that core box and saw those cards were illegible, I would be really upset and probably would not buy their next game which would be zombie side um the black plague uh green horde or whatever um yeah uh i would be real upset about this uh this does anger me quite a bit and i think that it's very insulting and if i go to buy a copy of this and these are are you know screwed up i'm taking it back to the store because if these are if these corrected cards are not fixed in the core box, I'm taking it back because it's defective. And I'm going to have it sent back to Cool Money or not because that's garbage. Uh, I do not want a defective product. And the fact that these are glossier on one side than the other is almost as insulting as having to send me replacement cards. Get some quality control going, you guys. Really, this is an obvious mistake that should never have happened, and it really detracts from the game. And the fact that you have to send a replacement pack is incredibly insulting to all your backers who trusted you with their money to do the job right the first time. I understand that mistakes happen, but this is a glaring mistake that never should have slipped through. Who's in charge of quality control? Is somebody on the job drinking or something? Seriously. I'm furious about that. Like I said, these aren't even mine. Uh, I don't like watching my friends get hosed. At least these were included with the, the box when it came in. If it hadn't been, oh, I'd be livid. I would be lit up like you would not. I'd be on the phone with them, emailing them daily till I got this. and Or asking for my money back. I don't know which. I would, And I would probably be writing all kinds of bad reviews online. And quite honestly... Um, there's, there's enough here wrong that I have trouble recommending this game. And the only reason I would even suggest it would be because they ha are known to have good quality fun games. Uh, so the mechanics are good, but the minis look a little lackluster f overall. Not quite up to their standard. They're okay. They're decent. But I've seen them do better. Um, and some of the minis look a little cheap. And these cards, the fact that they had to, they had to fix this, I was furious the entire time I was doing these unboxings because of these cards. And then the very last thing I look at is the replacement pack where they, they give you more cards. I didn't read this because I'm lazy mainly. Or I would have opened these right after the core box and put it in that video. 
but it's good they sent it. I'll give them credit for that. They put the effort in. The mistake was caught at some point. These were included. It probably delayed the shipment of the Kickstarter stuff. But I don't know anything about the Kickstarter. I don't know if they caught this problem and notified people. But uh, I'm not that heavily involved in other people's Kickstarters. Because I didn't invest in this one. But this is infuriating. The quality control person should be fired. If I was in charge of the company, this would cost me money. And I would fire someone. Because they had to reprint these cards, corrected, and then ship them out to at least the Kickstarter people. And how many of these slip through onto eBay or something like that where somebody is not going to get the replacement pack? How are they going to get it? What is the procedure there? Can I go online and request them? Or more likely, do I have to send in my cards and get the corrected ones? And then I'm not getting all the corrected ones. So if I buy another box a year from now, online or from a store that didn't get the corrected cards, what then? Was this caught before they went to market? I don't know. And are they gonna replace them in the core boxes that have these that may have gone to stores? Uh, retailers could have ordered this and are they gonna are is your retailer sharp enough to give you the replacement pack or the replacement cards or are they gonna charge you for them I got money says half the retailers are gonna charge you to buy these cards they'll sell them individually to you despite what cool many or not says so yeah I'm lit up about that overall if you're gonna play this game make sure you get the replacement cards and I would heavily suggest getting the zombie side pack because this will give you crossover for both games. So if you do like this game, it'll give you a good crossover of bringing your zombie side guys over. Or at least let you play with the guys from this game in your zombie side game. I think this game does look really fun. But there's a lot of mistakes here. And I can't get past that. So I'm not personally going to buy a copy of this till I'm assured that these cards have been corrected in all the packs. Which means I probably never will buy it. But uh, I will play it with Wyatt because he has a copy. And uh, we will enjoy the corrected cards, thankfully. So that'll do it for this episode. Sorry I got a little ranty. I tend to do that these days. Uh, that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you for watching and supporting the channel. And uh, sorry about this one being so long. Thanks for sticking with us and we hope to see you on the next episode.